Okay, this is day 14 of the second distance learning packet for the math section. So again, more practice with exponents, just like uh, the previous day. And for this task, we are asked to match the volume of each cube. So the expression that matches the volume with the cube that it goes with. So um, what I'm going to do is just figure out the volume first and then take a look at the numbers. So this first one, I'm just gonna call this A and then B and C. So for A, we're talking about volume now and it gives us a little hint. So volume is length times width times height. But for a cube, it's basically the side to the third power. So we have a side length and that is this expression for each of these, that's one side. So you could think of it as the side times itself three times, or we can use an exponent to show that. And then in the previous day, the video shows at the beginning all the rules for exponents. If you need to go back to that, you can take a look at that table or just flip through to the, your um, packet and it's at the beginning of day 13. Okay, so um, the first one is 4a squared b to the third and all of that to the third power. Or you can write it out, instead of the exponent, you could do times 4a squared b cubed. You could do that instead. So whatever works for you, um, use that. Okay, so let's remove these parentheses. So how are we going to handle this exponent out here? So when we have a power of a power, okay, I'll just go back and show you what table I'm referring to. So power of a power, which is this, the second one, then look at what happens with the exponents. We're going to multiply those together. So we have a 3 and a 2, so 3 times 2 would be 2 to the 6th power. Okay, so let's use that on this task here. So make sure these all have exponents, and we're just going to multiply. So 4, same base, 1 times 3 is 3, and then a, 2 times 3 is 6, and then b, 3 times 3 is 9. All right, so let's see if that matches any of these numbers that we have in the boxes. It does not. So a to the 6, b to the 9th, that looks like possibly that one. Is there any others that look like that? Okay, so I'm thinking it's probably that one. So what, 64, how does that, how do I get that when we have 4 to the 3rd power? So what does 4 to the 3rd power mean? 4 times 4 times 4. So 4 times 4, that's 16. 16 times 4 is 64. So that is the correct one. So that, I'm going to put an A to match that. Okay, let's do the same thing with B. Volume equals 2A to the 4th, B to the 3rd. All that to the 3rd power. And then we simplify. So here's an exponent, so 2 to the 3rd power, a, and then 4 times 3 is 12, and then b, 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so 2 to the 3rd power, so it looks like none of these numbers are in exponent form, so the, the beginning number, so 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So 8, a to the 12th, b to the 9th. So let's see if we have that. So 8, I'm looking for 8. Um, here's 8, a to the 12th, b to the 6th, that's not it. Here we go, b to the 9th, so that one is for cube b. Okay, cube c, we have one side length is 4, a cubed, b to the 4th, and we're going to cube that, cube it. Okay, and then add an exponent for that number, so we have 4 to the 3rd, A, and we're multiplying, 3 times 3 is 9, multiplying those exponents, B to the 4 times 3 is 12th power. Again, 4 to the 3rd, we did that over here for A, and that was, what, 64, right? 64, A, 6 to the 6th, B to the 9th. Okay, so same thing over here, so 64, A to the 9th, B to the 12th. So let's see what we have. 64, A to the 9th, B to the 12th, so that's this one, C. So just to show this, um, that goes with that, these two, and then finally that one with that one. 
Okay, and that's it. Again, if we were given the values of A and B, then we could actually come up with cubic inches or cubic yards or whatever the units are, cubic meters, but we don't, so we're gonna leave it as this. All right, so the next thing is again, just practicing exponents. And that same table that I went back to, it also has the rule for quotient or when we divide powers. So what are we doing here? So look at their example. The shortcut or the rule is when we divide powers, we subtract exponents. So that exponent is seven. So subtract numerator and minus denominator. So seven minus four, and that's gonna give me five to the third power, which is what they get. Okay, so we're subtracting exponents when we divide powers. All right, so let's do a couple examples. Again, this is all review, you've done this. I'm not gonna do all the problems. All right, so let's take a look at one that's fairly straightforward, like number one. Okay, so we need to make sure the bases are the same. So the bases are n and n, so that works. So we have n, and then we subtract exponents. So nine minus four, just write it out, because if there's any negatives, it's gonna help you to figure that out. So nine minus four is five, so that's n to the fifth. Okay, let's find one that's a little bit messier. Um, maybe two bases or three bases. Okay, so number six, has, we have an x and we have a y as a base. So I'm gonna write those out. And then what are the exponents for each? So the first one for x, I have 16 minus four, which is 12. And then for the y, I have 14 minus nine, which is five. And that's it. Okay, number seven, same thing, but we have three bases this time. Okay, for the fours, I have five minus four, which is one. And then for the five, I have three minus two, which is one. And for the six, so what is this? What's down here on the bottom? There's no exponents, so make sure you put a one. So that'd be two minus one, which is one. All right, so here's one that's a little bit interesting. Those are all to the one power, the first power. So we could just multiply those. It just means four times five times six. So what does that equal? We could actually just figure out a number for that. And four times five is 20 times six, so that's 120. Okay, so we just write it out as a number. If it is small exponents like that, then yeah, typically we would just write it out as an actual number. All right, let's continue. All right, so back to our rule of four. So we haven't done one of these in a while. Um, it's always good to kind of go back and forth, make sure that you remember all the things that you've learned and that when we go to a new topic, we don't just forget about all the previous stuff that we've learned. So this is a rule of four. One of the most important concepts that you must be able to uh, master and in order to be ready for high school. So... Um, I'm not gonna do the whole thing because we've done a lot of these. You can go back to previous videos. Uh, the first packet was full of these. So what do we need to do? We need to um, make a table, graph this equation, and um, then write a little uh, description about what is possibly happening here. So let's take a look. Um, so this equation is in the form of y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, and that's two, and then b, the y-intercept, which is one. So we can write those over here. All right, so when we, when we write our description, we need to talk about something that corresponds to the y-intercept, which is one, which is our starting point. So for example, it could be something like, I, I think money is always an easy topic. So I start off with a dollar and I receive $2 every day. So something that repeats over and over. So $2 every day, $2 every week, $2 every hour, something like that. Or it doesn't have to be that. Um, you could talk about uh, maybe hiking. So I started off at the first step and then I skipped two steps each time or every second. So something like that. It doesn't have to be elaborate. Just come up with something that addresses or that talks about both of those numbers so the starting point which is one and the rate of change which is two and the rest is up to you all right so how do we make a table 
out of that. Maybe it's easier to graph it first. Let's see if we can do that. So we have x, we have y, and the numbers, um, the y-intercept is 1. So I think just counting by 1s is, is fine. And then 1s on the x-axis as well. Okay, and then we start off at the y-intercept. Okay, put a dot, a point at 1. Then our slope, remember, is 2, which is 2 over 1. So rise over run. We need a fraction. So up 1, 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. Uh, 2 over 1, and we keep going, and we're just going to draw a line that connects through all of these points. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points from the graph. Let's use those to make our table. We don't have words yet until you write your description, and then you could put, you know, what are we talking about? Is it is it money? Is it what? What are we talking about and then you're going to add that label. And same with the, the graph. Make sure you put the label when you have that figured out. So the points. Um, this first one is at 0, 1. So 0, 1. The next one is at 1, 3. So 1, 3. And then 2, 5. So 2, 5. And then 3. And then 4. And then what are we skipping by over here? 2s, right? Because that's our slope. 2, 2 over one. So that'd be seven, that'd be nine. We'd keep going if we wanted to, but that's enough points. And that's it. So the rest is the description. And then we're going to write the labels on the table and the labels on the graph once you have the description. Again, if you have a, any questions, just leave a comment and I will get back to you. And that is it for day 14.